Welcome to American History Lesson 16. Turn of the Century. Our lesson objectives are identify and understand how technology influenced and shaped the growth of the United States, identify and understand how social change was impacted and how it impacted the country, identify and understand how the lives of minorities changed during the turn of the century, identify and understand how entertainment influenced American culture. Technology and the United States. The technological advances impacting the nation were used to reduce the problems of city life. With the Bessemer process, steel frameworks were used to build tall buildings. These new skyscrapers allowed the cities to build up and maximize the limited land. Streetcars were now used for public transportation, which allowed people to live in one part of the city and work in another. These transit links were then expanded to connect different cities and the surrounding suburbs into a collected larger area. Most cities built elevated train lines to free up space, street space and avoid traffic jams. Steel was used to create bridges across large rivers, connecting previously difficult to reach parts of the city. While the cities were growing more efficient, city planners looked at making them more attractive and livable. These planners created vast parks and recreational areas such as Central Park in New York City. Major cities such as Boston and Chicago would create parks to help beautify their cities and create areas of peace and calm in often hectic city life. Technology improved how we communicated with each other. Orville and Wilbur Wright of Dayton, Ohio would build the first successful airplane. The ability to travel through the air had been experimented with over the last 1,000 years, but technology had not progressed to the point of making it readily available. The government saw the possibility of the airplane and quickly adopted the invention to transport mail across the country. With the improvement of schools and increase in free time, literacy rates soared among the American population. These new readers read everything they could, which meant publishers began printing more books, magazines, and newspapers than ever before. Other important factors, such as improvement in papermaking, printing, and typesetting, aided the increased growth in reading. Fun fact, Milton Wright, the father of the Wright brothers and a church minister said, it is impossible for men in the future to fly like birds. Flying is reserved for the angels. Do not mention that again, lest you be guilty of blasphemy. Later, Orville Wright would take his 82-year-old father on his first and only flight. Milton Wright got excited and cried out, higher, Orville, higher. Another invention made eat made pictures rather than words more accessible. George Eastman created an affordable and easy to use camera and this allowed millions of Americans to pursue their interests in photography. The camera allowed journalists to document the news events they covered and spread this information throughout the country. Changes to America's society. Many reformers wanted to improve public education. Up to this time, children were not required to attend school, and many left after four years of education. In the last decades of the 1800s, 31 states made it mandatory for children aged 8 to 14 years old to attend school for at least 12 to 16 weeks a year. There were difficulties even for those children that attended school. Many teachers did not focus on academic subjects and instead focused on teaching their students specific trades or craft. Physical punishment was very strict and deterred many students from attending. African-American children were often denied a place in schools. While African-Americans were not allowed to attend school, many immigrant children were welcomed in public schools. The immigrant, immigrant children were placed in public schools to improve their education, and many parents hoped the schools would Americanize their children. Adult immigrants would often attend night school to learn the English language and prepare to become American citizens. The reformers wanted to improve public education and worked hard to get results. Their first goal, goal was to increase the number of available schools and kindergartens grew from 200 in 1880 to almost 3,000 in 1900. The reformers worked hard to improve education past elementary standards. The number of high schools increased from 800 in 1878 to 5,500 by 1898. The high school curriculum was improved and started to include courses preparing students for industrial and office jobs. In 1900, only 2% 2 of young people attended college, with most of them coming from wealthy or middle-class families. Despite this, the closing decades of the 1800s saw an increase in the number of available colleges, as well as an improvement in curriculum. 
Many universities started to research the sciences and advancement in technology, while others focused on single subjects such as law or medicine. African Americans were again largely denied admittance in many colleges, and so colleges were created for African Americans seeking a higher education. The first African American to earn a PhD was W.E.B. Du Bois in 1895. The emphasis on culture and education continued to grow in other venues as well. Art galleries and museums became more common and friendly to the public. Public libraries became common in most cities and became a hotspot of educational services. Books from serious authors were written to confront important social or political issues, and many readers enjoyed reading dime novels. Minorities and America's Growth While the emphasis on education was being achieved in the southern states' actions were taken to limit the rights of African Americans. Many states had enforced laws restricting African Americans' voting rights and by this denied them political power. These legal restrictions were done by passing laws that placed unfair limits on voting rights, such as the ability to read, while denying African Americans the right to go to school or placing taxes on votes that many African Americans couldn't afford. <laughs> Another law passed in the South would prevent voters from voting if their fathers or grandfathers could not vote prior to January 1, 1867. This date is important because it was the day where African Americans were previously given the right to vote. These laws and many unofficial rules were all created to deny African Americans the right to vote. Despite many legal challenges, the Supreme Court allowed many of these laws to remain standing. Southern states took their legal discrimination even further by passing the Jim Crow laws, which segregated whites and blacks in separate facilities. These facilities dedicated to whites were kept largely pristine, while facilities designated for African Americans were often the bare minimum that states were required to provide. Homer Plessy, when denied a seat on a railroad car, brought his case all the way to the Supreme Court, but was denied by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court would rule that separate but equal facilities were legal. In many states, social customs were used to deny African Americans equal rights. Booker T. Washington would argue that blacks should not desire complete equality with whites, as whites would fight this. Washington instead thought that African Americans should strive for economic security. Ida Wells worked across the nation to stop the practice of lynching or hanging people without legal trials. Many such lynches were pre performed by mobs of angry whites against blacks for any crime or even when there was no evidence of criminal actions. While these actions were prevalent in the South, African Americans would face discrimination in the North too. Mexican Americans were victims of discrimination, though not in the numbers facing African Americans. Mexican Americans were hired to build the railroads that began crossing the nation but were paid very little and worked in terrible conditions. Landlords would force their tenants to work to repay debts called debt peonage, but the Supreme Court ruled, that, ruled against this in 1911. The Chinese population in America grew as the railroad required more workers, but soon white workers were threatened by the number of available Chinese workers. Congress re reacted to this panic in 1882 by passing the Chinese Exclusion Act, which prevented further immigration from China. As the railroads were completed, Chinese workers then faced discrimination in finding new jobs, and many were forced to find menial, low-pay low-paying jobs to support themselves and their families. The birth of modern entertainment. With business reform creating shorter work weeks, Americans now have more free time and look for ways to enjoy themselves. Looking to capitalize on the restructured work week, many amusement parks were built around the cities. Sports such as cycling and tennis became very popular. Those who wanted more relaxing activities started watching pro sports and trips to Baseball parks became more popular than ever before. While baseball was the most popular sport of this period, boxing was very popular and enjoyed great success. For those looking for more cultural activities, trips to theaters became a favorite pastime. Many shows with either actors or singers became astoundingly popular, and entire families would visit these activities to share their cultural pursuit. In theaters, many singers and actors began to rise to stardom. As popular as theaters were, many more people were made trips to vaudeville performances. The biggest draw during this time was the many circuses, where city dwellers could see animals, tricks, and sights unavailable in their daily lives. The most popular music of the period was ragtime, which was a blend of African-American spiritual music and European music. Ragtime would later evolve into what we know as jazz music. 
the motion picture emerged from combining art and technology, making an almost immediate impact. While the first movies were barely 10 minutes long, in 1914, a movie titled Birth of a Nation was released that would change the film industry. While many viewers found the movie a blatantly racist portrayal of Southern life during the Reconstruction, the movie was longer than any previous movie and used startling new film methods that would become the staple of movie making. Americans were entertained by the emergence of mass media through newspapers and short movies. While the events focused on local and national events, many publishers soon learned they could release sensationalized stories to increase sales. A very important change emerged in the sale of goods, which became modern shopping. Developing cities would concentrate emerging businesses in central locations to maximize their profits. Department stores soon emerged that offered a wide range of products for purchase and soon became national chain stores as retailers looked to increase their profits. To draw in customers, retailers and manufacturers spent massive amounts of money on radio, newspaper, and movie advertisements. For consumers who did not live near cities, door-to-door salespeople made trips to homes and they produce catalogs de- detailing their products. The U.S. Post Office began massive delivery to rural dwellers in 1896, and this helped consumers and retailers interact greater than ever before. What next? Take the time to go back and review the lesson on your own. After your review, complete the lesson review for the lesson and submit for grading. Remember, your submission should follow all the rules for standard written English. All submissions must be written in your own words and sources you cited at the end. How to cite sources in APA format. When you reference a source within an APA-style paper, whether it is using a direct quote, repurposing an image, or simply referring to an idea or theory, you should insert an in-text citation the author's surname, and the date of publication within parentheses straight after a direct quote. Citationmachine.net will assist you in creating citations.